This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Forward. Indefensible recounts a three-month journey I embarked upon after I watched the Netflix documentary Making a Murderer, along with tens of millions of other viewers around the globe, in late December 2015. The trip was strange because I thought I'd already taken it. Twice. Once, when I watched Stephen Avery's murder trial unfold in the county where I work as a prosecutor, and again three years later when I reviewed its high points for the final section of a book I was writing about the Avery case, entitled The Innocent Killer. That book, published by the American Bar Association in 2014, focused on Avery's wrongful conviction in 1985, not his 2007 trial. In neither of those trips did I pay close attention to the landscape of the murder trial. It wasn't my trial, after all. I was not directly involved. To my surprise, I began to wonder while watching the series whether I had taken a wrong turn ten years earlier and reached the wrong conclusion when, like everyone else in my line of work, I had assumed the evidence-planting defense in the Avery trial was nonsense. Avery's accomplice, Brendan Dassey, had confessed and identified his uncle as the main culprit, and there was overwhelming physical evidence linking Avery to the scene of the crime. It was, as some prosecutors like to say, a slam-dunk case for the state. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Was it possible we might all have been wrong? I knew the documentary's producers were biased in favor of Avery. They had interviewed me for the project, and they even tried to get me to come around to their way of thinking. But some of the material in the docu-series was new to me, and none of it was complimentary to the police with regard to how the evidence was found and the interrogation methods used on Brendan Dassey, Avery's 16-year-old learning disabled nephew and accomplice in Teresa Hallback's murder. So I decided to journey through the trial again, but this time more carefully, as if my life depended on it, because it might. Half the country, it seemed, was convinced the police had set up Avery again, that lightning had struck twice, and that he had been wrongly convicted a second time. Many people were angry. Some made threats on my life and the lives of others because we were part of Manitoba County law enforcement and had spoken out publicly of Avery's guilt in the wake of making a murderer. Indefensible recounts my independent search for the truth about the Stephen Avery case. I thought I knew that truth, but it was to some extent fractured by making a murderer. As I delved deeper into the circumstances surrounding Teresa Hallback's murder, the truth became whole again. As in any issue as complicated and as controversial as this one, the truth is elusive in the Avery case. Peruse the Reddit pages on the topic of Stephen Avery for an hour, and you will see what I mean. I tried to be as careful and unbiased as possible when I conducted my research for this book, but in the end, perfect objectivity is only something we can strive for. I'm still a prosecutor in Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. This is the background I come from. I'm not pro-prosecution in the usual sense. I have believed for a long time that the criminal justice system is broken to some degree and needs to be reformed. I have given presentations about wrongful convictions and police and prosecutor misconduct. I have written about these issues as well and about what can go wrong if prosecutors lose sight of their calling and seek convictions instead of justice. I share with the creators of Making a Murderer a desire to draw attention to broken aspects of the criminal justice system so that it can be reformed where needed. I also serve on the advisory board at the Wisconsin Innocence Project, a role that should not be, but is, a rarity among prosecutors. That's not to say my judgment is free from any and all bias. No one's is. So take what you read as you will and decide for yourself. There are a few things you should know at the outset. First, although I am still a prosecutor in Manitoba County, I wrote this book in my personal capacity as a private citizen who has made his home in a Wisconsin community that has been bedeviled by the Avery case for 30 years. I played a role in Mr. Avery's exoneration in 2003, 
but I was not involved in his wrongful conviction in 1985, nor in his murder trial in 2007. Mr. Avery's $36 million lawsuit.